Okay, so free body diagrams show the forces acting on object. In this case, we have a book which is stationary. So I could draw the arrows to represent the force onto the diagram, but if I don't have a diagram, I can just draw the force onto a particle like here. So because this book is stationary, firstly we know that it's got weight acting downwards, which I can just label as mg. And because this book is stationary, the force on are going to balance. Other force is going to be the normal reaction force. And I'm going to make sure I draw it the, the same length. And the normal reaction force acts at 90 degrees away from the surface it's in contact with. The word normal means at right angles. So in this case, because the table is below it, it's acting directly away from the table. Okay, here we have a skydiver falling at terminal velocity, which means, again, the forces are balanced. So it's not accelerating. We have his weight acting downwards, mg, and then we have air resistance acting upwards. Here we have an, a rocket that's accelerating upwards. So we still again have weight acting downwards. And there's going to be a large thrust going upwards. It's going to be large in the weight. That's why it's accelerating upwards because the resultant force is upwards. Because, and the question doesn't mention if there's no air, if there's any air resistance, but if there was air resistance, it would be in the opposite direction to motion. So it'd also be acting downwards because the rocket is going upwards. Okay, in this free body diagram, we'll draw the forces on the girl as she as the lift accelerates downwards. So because the girl's going to be accelerating along with the lift, we know that the weight must be larger than the upward force, which in this case, because she's in contact with the floor, is the normal reaction force. So now there's a resultant force acting downwards, which is why she's going to accelerate downwards. She won't accelerate 9.81, she'll be a bit, a bit smaller than that. Um, and also she would feel like she weighs less than normal. So her weight hasn't changed, but because the normal reaction force is how you get a sense of how much you weigh, and because it's smaller than usual, it would feel like she would feel like she weighs more. Okay, here we have an archer pulling back on a bowstring, and one of I uh, done the forces at point X. So first, there's going to be tension along the string, and this tension acts perfectly along the string. I'm going to call that tension. So I'm going to draw these onto the diagram. So the tension, the first string, and there's going to be tension, the second string, second string. I'm going to assume that they're the same, and because the person is pulling it back. There's going to be a force in the backward direction like this. And here, for the string to be at rest, stationary, these forces must balance. So all the upward forces from the tension and the downward force from the other string must balance. And all the forces towards the left must balance all the forces towards the right. Okay, so here we have an athlete holding on to in this position right here. So we're going to assume there's going to be some force on his hands acting along this way. And then, of course, it's going to be his weight pulling downwards, and you know these should be balanced. So, if he's to be stationary, so if we draw these onto the diagram, they look a bit like this. And what we'll find is that the upward forces from these two components here must balance the downward weight mg, and we can call this like the tension in his hand. And the left the tension towards the left and the tension towards the right must also balance. Okay, so here we have a car that's accelerating towards the right. Okay, so the, the force that's pushing the car forward, sometimes we call it thrust and things like that, but it's actually the friction between the tires and the wheel. So the friction on, on the tires is actually pushing it forward in this case, because that's how it's accelerating. There's going to be some drag force, which is from air resistance. So we can call it drag or air resistance, I'm going to call it drag for short. Uh, acting in the, in the reverse direction and of course because it's not moving up or down the weight of the car would be balanced by the normal reaction force so we don't need to worry about those two because those two will balance out okay so far we've been treating all the objects as point objects but sometimes especially when things start to rotate and spin the where the force applied on the object does matter so in this case, we've got like a ladder. We're going to assume it's a uniform ladder, meaning the, the weight of the ladder is evenly distributed and it's resting on a wall. So firstly, the weight of the ladder will act through the center of mass of the ladder, mg there. 
and when you can see the uh, wall is pushing on the ladder and it's going to push at 90 degrees this way okay so it's a smooth wall and if it means this if it's a smooth wall that means there's no friction between the wall and the ladder so otherwise there will be a bit of force acting upward this way but because it's a smooth wall we can ignore that and then it's also on the floor the floor is going to push upwards away from there and if I mean if there is some friction between the uh, floor and the ladder then most likely that would also be acting this way it's a bit of friction there and all of these forces should balance in order for the object to stay stationary and also the moments the turning effects must also balance as well okay here's another common question so these people on these rides uh, that is it's basically a swing that's swing around in circles um we draw the force on them so because they're on the seat there all the string is pulling them up that's going to be pulling them upwards towards the left so this guy here is going to be pulled that way so we can call that the tension in the in the strings if you want then of course we've got the weight acting downwards mg and if they're maintaining a constant height that must mean the upward component of the tension must balance the downward weight but there is a force overall force towards the left and that's actually what's keeping the person going around in a circle okay again we've got more forces at an angle the tension is going to act along the string the rope here the weight is acting towards the center of the planet mg and he's pushing away from the wall so if we assume that he's pushing maybe at 90 degrees this way we can draw that on this way and this is a common question that's asked so that's the normal reaction force him pushing away from the wall okay here we have a box on a slope and it's stationary so firstly we have the weight of the box mg and then we have the normal reaction force from the surface of the floor slope I'll call that n and then because this this won't balance as you can see there's going to be an overall force towards the left there needs to be another force well and it's going to be from the friction of the surface and that's going to act along the surface but it's preventing it from sliding down so that's in this direction here so along this way okay here we have a box that's being pulled up the slope again we have the weight acting downwards mg now we don't know if it's accelerating up the slope uh, up the slope or going at a constant speed but we still have these forces that must balance which is the normal reaction force um, and then we'll have the tension along the string that's pulling it this way and if this surface is rough then the te uh, the friction would act in the opposite direction to the motion and yeah okay here we have a bubble rise rising so we'll have the, the weight of the bubble acting downwards and the force that's pushing upwards is the up thrust And because the bubble is going upwards, it's going to have a drag force because of the liquid that's going to act in the opposite direction to the motion. So it's going to be drag force acting downwards. And this drag force is due to the collision of the air particles in the bubble with the particles in the liquid.